How much capital is needed for Bitcoin to get to $1 million? Well, a top Bitcoin analyst is sharing that number. And Telegram CEO gets arrested in France. And this is bringing up a lot of questions around free speech as the ton coin takes a massive dump. And Gavin Wood, the founder of Polkadot, is introducing proof of ink, a way to verify your identity with a tattoo. This sounds a bit dystopian. Let's break it down. Hey everybody, welcome into the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. I'm your host, Tony Edward. On your way in, please hit that subscribe button as well as a thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify or Apple, please leave a five-star rating and review. Folks, how much capital is needed for Bitcoin to hit $1 million? Well, Willie Wu, who's a well-known Bitcoin analyst, He's been doing analysis on Bitcoin for years, and he's well-respected. He says, back of envelope calculation on how much capital needs to go into Bitcoin in order for it to hit $1 million per coin. The answer, $5 trillion or 1% of global wealth assets. He says, so far, only $620 billion has been invested. Now, do I believe Bitcoin can reach $1 million? Absolutely. Given what we've seen so far with the demand for Bitcoin, with countries adding it as a reserve asset, making it legal tender, you have all of Wall Street and major financial uh, firms across the globe all building ETFs, and we're seeing that these ETFs are breaking records. So there's a lot of capital that's going to flow into Bitcoin and altcoins. So I believe Bitcoin one day will hit $1 million. I think it may be a, a bit after 2030. That may be the time when this could take place. But I could be wrong. It could take longer. But I think the demand we're seeing and the need for a truly hard asset that is built for the digital technological age that we live in is going to see a lot of inflows as people leave gold and other traditional assets. And we see because of the hard cap supply, um, this is a big driver in the value because there's only a limited supply. There's a finance supply. So you have that supply and demand economics that plays out here. So this is very interesting. Now, th th he could be wrong. It could probably take more money, but I think Bitcoin will get there. But I think it's probably around in this ballpark area of 5 trillion. So nevertheless, very interesting. Now, speaking of ETFs, yesterday we saw $252 million in inflows into the ETFs overall. This was the highest in a month. So since July, uh, specifically Hunter Horsley of Bitwise Asset Management, which has a Bitcoin ETF, said they got 40 million of inflows into their ETF yesterday. He says over $100 million traded in incredible performance, folks. And this is a sign of the demand I was just talking to you guys about, and it's happening globally. There's ETFs in Hong Kong, in the UK, in the EU, and so forth. So eventually, you're going to see all of the world start to allocate a significant amount of their investment capital into Bitcoin and as well as all coins. Now, Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency, the most well-known, the most trusted, and so forth, and has the institutional adoption and so forth. So all coins are going to follow eventually, but Bitcoin pretty much leads the market. We, we know this. These are the facts. So these are very interesting numbers, guys. Now, something I want to share with you from our partner, Santiment, is that the Bitcoin on exchange supply is is low, it continues to go lower, and that's very bullish. It means there's not many sellers right now. What we've seen historically is when the market is usually going to hit a top, we see a lot of Bitcoin headed to exchanges for a sell-off, right? So you will see this number start to go up as we get closer to the top. In fact, back in March, where the market had a sell-off, where Bitcoin did that incredible run-up, there was a ton of Bitcoin that went on the exchanges. So this is why you need to look at different metrics when it comes to this market to get a holistic view and to get an idea where we may be in the market cycle. Because you want to walk away from this market with money in your pocket, with, with as much returns as possible, and you don't want to be buying the tops. Obviously, that's the dumb money crowd. I didn't make that term up. That's just the market terminology that exists for stocks and so forth. So uh, good to see that we are not anywhere near the top. Up and uh, we're seeing Bitcoin rally. And uh, as I shared in yesterday's podcast, I believe a significant bullish rally is coming uh, in the latter half of September into Q4. And, and this will be as the Fed cuts rates and the money printer is starting and Janet Yellen continues her liquidity injections via the Treasury and much more. But uh, bullish times are ahead. And 
Uh, we are seeing, once again, different stats and metrics that are showing us this. Now, quick word from our sponsor. A great place to buy Bitcoin is at Uphold, which is a great crypto platform I've been using since 2018. Uh, I've interviewed the CEO, the CFO, and many folks from this company. They have 260 plus cryptocurrencies. They're available in over 150 countries. And best of all, folks, they are fully transparent. They have transparency reports. They are fully reserved, so they don't commingle or lend out your funds. You can also trade precious metals on this platform such as gold silver palladium and platinum if you'd like to learn more about uphold check out the link in the description now guys we got news that pavel durov uh, the founder of telegram was arrested in france and is facing 20 years in jail for refusing to censor his platform the charges include terrorism money laundering and more and there's a big question coming up here of free speech, right? Because there's the political aspect of what's been happening in certain countries like France and the censorship that they try to do. Now, we always got to look at the details because the things that they are saying is that uh, Telegram is not doing a good job in censoring child P. I won't say the word, but you guys understand um, and other things. Um, and I, I don't have all the details, but if that's true, I think Telegram should do a better job now trying to throw this guy in jail for 20 years over what random people are doing on his platform. I find that a bit ridiculous. I feel they need to work with him to figure it out. But to do this as though he's the one doing all these nefarious activities, that's wrong, right? So I think they're, they're trying to throw the book at him from a free speech standpoint because many of these folks don't like this. And, um, you know, it's what Elon and, and a bunch of other folks have been trying to fight for. Uh, but Let's see what happens, guys. That's what they're, you know, charging here. And and of course, the ton coin, which is very much related to the Telegram uh, network um, and the developers of Telegram and so forth work on ton coin, uh, took a big dump. It's down like 15 percent um, since this news. So we'll see what happens. I think we got to wait and uh, let the dust settle, let the facts come out. But it's kind of crazy that they're doing this to him. Once again, you can you can maybe sanction the company, right? But why would you arrest the founder and try to throw him in jail for 20 years as though he's doing something, right? It's it's like Ross Ulbricht all again, all over again. Now with Ross, there, there's a bit more, uh, but for this guy, uh, it, it's not like he's the one, once again, doing the nefarious activities. Um, you have to go after the bad actors on the platform, not the platform holder, especially when it's a decentralized platform. So these are the things we have to keep fighting for, folks, and uh, make sure there's clear balance regulations and we don't have the abuse of, of uh free speech and our rights and so forth and uh but anyway we got to wait for more details to come out now moving ahead paypal and anchorage partner on pyusd stablecoin rewards program paypal of course is the payment giant they launched their stablecoin pyusd last year and it's pretty significant that you have this type of player in the market pyusd is launched on the ethereum blockchain and they're partnering with anchorage which is one of the top crypto custodians i've interviewed quite a few folks from anchorage over the years and they're looking to provide yield the question is what will Gary Gensler and the SEC do about this because we know Gary thinks stable coins are securities. And beyond that, he thinks that the yield generation is security, uh, a security offering. So the program will pay out yield on PayPal USD tokens held by Crypto Native Bank or in Anchorage's institutional self custody wallet Porto. So the companies are pitching the model as a way for users to earn money on PYUSD balances without having to stake, lend, or rehypothecate their funds. The stablecoins will remain fully segregated in their own on-chain accounts, meaning Anchorage and PayPal are not loaning customers assets out to earn a return to pay for the program. Now, that's very good. I love that, that it's, it's segregated and that's the way it should be done. The launch of the rewards program pitched toward Anchorage's accredited institutional clients comes amid a period of accelerating growth for PayPal's branded stablecoin, which has yet to crack a $1 billion market capitalization a year after its release. So uh, it's only for institutional clients. So maybe that's the difference and they, they have to be accredited. So uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, Let's see what the SEC does with this, but you, you can't trust Gary, right? But since it's institutional, he may love that, right? It's only for the big banks, not for you, uh, the average Joe and Jane. In August, the circulating supply of the Solana-based PYUSD stablecoins caught up with the equivalent token on Ethereum. So 
it looks like they expanded onto Solana. PayPal stablecoin also flipped the Justin Sun backed USDD to become the sixth largest USD dominated token by market capitalization. Its total supply is up over 64% over the last 30 days. So very interesting. I'll try to get the folks from PayPal or Anchorage on to talk about this, but uh, this is adoption, folks, and what we want to see. Now, some very interesting news coming from Gavin Wood, who's the founder of uh, Polkadot, which is has a native token of DOT, right? Uh, so Proof of Ink by Gavin Wood, the tattoo that secures your Web3 privacy. This seems really weird. So let me give it the details. The new solution, Proof of Ink, will enable users to prove their digital individuality in a privacy-preserving manner through a unique tattoo serving as proof of digital citizenship. Proof of Ink is set to launch in the fourth quarter of 2024, according to Gavin Wood, the co-founder of Ethereum, Polkadot, and Kusama. Wood announced during a keynote speech at the Web3 Summit in Berlin. We are able to deploy the baseline palette and launch the app at some point this year. Hopefully, the final quarter, we are aiming to launch the other two mechanisms next year. While Wood teased that one of the additional two identity solutions is further in development, he shared no details about their mechanics. So Proof of Ink will require these algorithmically generated tattoos in a particular place of the body to add to the solution's privacy element, explained Wood. The place is the same for everybody. This is part of guaranteeing individuality with all of that stuff that I just talked about. Privacy through the idea of a unique design signed on chain using trustless entities. For each new user tattoo, the blockchain will generate random numbers that create the algorithmically generated designs that are unique for all users. Users will have to spend a small balance of Polkadot or DOT tokens or potential vouchers that may be shared within the Web3 community before the applications launch this year. I don't know about this, folks. It's kind of along the lines of WorldCoin where they scan your retina. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't know about this. Maybe some people will, will want to do this. I don't. Um, and I don't want to be micro tripped or anything like that. But uh, it, and now don't get me wrong. You know, I, I wouldn't mind, you know, using my watch or something like that uh, or some you know phone and so forth to validate these things. But I'm not ready for this. This seems a bit dystopian. And especially in the early days, I've often talked about version 1.0 of anything is not great. It has its faults. So we need to see where's the data being stored and can it be hacked, right? And and all of these things. And yes, I know blockchain is being used, but, but on top of the blockchain, you know, what information is is available to be hacked and things like that? Because there's a, usually an app where, where you have to enter through that app, the data gets in, encrypted on the blockchain and so forth. But I want to see this thing tested, but I, I don't personally care for the tattoo. So we'll see. He, he did mention there's other two solutions that they're working on. But uh, the tattoo is kind of a turnoff for me. I don't know what you, how you guys feel about it, but you can leave your thoughts and comments below uh, about this. Well, that's the news, folks. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Don't forget to sign up for my free email newsletter on Substack. It's 100% free. Uh, be sure to grab a copy of my book to support the podcast. Grab a copy for yourself and your friends and family who want to learn about crypto. This can make a great gift. It's called Rethinking Crypto. It's available in digital and paperback on Amazon and barnesandnobles.com. If you bought a copy already, please leave a rating and review. It will really help out my rankings. Thank you guys. I appreciate you all. And I'll talk to you all later.